Hello out there. Today we have a new selection of old machines. These are woodworking machines from a sash and door factory, the same place that I previously mentioned with this big old joiner. So it turns out the joiner is a 13 and a half inch um, cutting area. It's kind of a funny number. That's exactly the length of the uh, cutting blades on it. I cleaned it up with the angle grinder, made a significant amount of dust, and found out a couple of funny little things I'll show you here. So the bed has pits in it, which seem to be casting flaws from the factory. And what they went along and did was they filled them with Babbitt metal or some sort of soft alloy and then smoothed them over. So when I went along with the uh, wire wheel, of course, wire wheel, it uh, took a chunk out of those. And now it's very obvious that these pits are in place. Anyway, they're not going to make a very big issue. I'm not going to have a big deal. Um, all I'm going to do is fire a little shot of grease. The cutter turns extremely smoothly and the counter shaft is on the floor ready to go up. So I need I think one more machine, get the planer in here and do some thinking on how it's going to be set up. If it does end up getting set up in here because the planer, you need a good length in front and behind for your in and out feed. And to put it in line with the count, with the line shafts running this way, doesn't really make sense. So generally on the joiner, you're running shorter stuff. So it's not as important, but enough with this on the new machines. So we have here a sticker molder or it's a molding machine, often known as a sticker because you can pass smaller pieces of wood through it. And um, it's vital in making door and window parts as well as any sort of ornamental molding. Up to six inch width can be made on this and uh, quite deep pieces depending on the cutter. Um, it has two feed rollers and one cutter head. This is one of the smallest sticker molders that I've come across. It's made by H.V. Smith. Uh, this model goes back to, I believe, 1885. But this is a little bit of an updated model because all the wheels on it are straight spoked. If you go earlier, you look at the few early examples online, they all have curvy spokes. But other than that, it's a, an identical machine. So uh, the next machine in the back corner, big heavy lug. It is a folding table tenoner. So um, you pass the piece of wood through, it takes a cut off the top and bottom. And in the case of this one, it even takes a cut on the end a little bit so you can kind of make a groove in uh, for, for um, window, window parts. It's real heavy. This one's much more light. I put this one in place myself. That one I need significant help. Um, so, both of them run. I figured while they were out, might as well oil them, check everything, make, every, make sure everything's tight, and hook them up to the tractor. So I'll show little clips here. Here's a close-up of the uh, the molder. All I've done is flipped this shaving deflector out of the way. So you can see here is the square head with two cutting knives on it. This uh, mandrel, I guess I'll call it, can accept cutters that come all the way out to here with whatever combination of bushings to, to make this position wherever along the shaft. So. You can cut simple things, you can cut notches, grooves. Here's a nice ornamental example of a knife. That would be, who knows, crown molding, lower, whatever type of moldings. And you could then pro put it out here, for example, and then this would just be blank, blank wood for uh, that type of thing. Uh, all of these should have a pair. You should have a matching pair of knives, one on the top, one on the bottom. If you only have one knife, there is a way to use just a, a counterweight of uh, basically the same 
mass and bolt it to this side so that your whole thing isn't out of balance. This machine is nice in that it has a couple cutter heads that came with it. So this one has slots for four, four cutters. Um, nice thing with having multiple cutter heads is you can set, you can do a setup and then take them off depending what you have to switch up. Just put a new, whole new head on instead of doing a setup from the bottom. This here and this here are just guides that hold the piece of wood against the table and the back. Uh, this handle going up adjusts your elevation. And then you can lock it in the back. And then you can probably barely see the feed rollers here. They have these knurled um, pieces like this. And all those do is run along your wood and push it inwards. So you can put these in any combination depending on what you have to cut and how far and so on. So to engage the machine, well, you have a, you power it in the back corner like you saw in the video. And to engage it, there's a handle here. It kind of has a step. So up is out of gear. And then as you move it down, there's a bit of a step that holds it there. Then it engages this part. Um, what they had done was made this funny little block and they could wedge this in the way so that it would stay on because this thing has been used for so long that it wore, the step wore right through the uh, shifting handle so it, it doesn't stay anymore. It wants to hop through. So that was kind of funny. This thing has produced a lot of goods. Before we move on, I'll also mention that this machine with that red belt on the bottom has two steps, which can adjust speeds. And you can also see that the big wheel on the top, it has been basically made bigger outside of the factory to slow the feed down even more. These machines, when they were made, they, they really cook along, they really put the wood through. So onto this guy, this is the Tenoner. It has, uh, it's, it's a nice machine in that it has a folding table. You can see the arm is out of the way right now. This is the arm, it just folds out. And then your table, you now see the length of your table is all the way from here to there. And then you slide it and this arm pivots as you slide it. There are these two main cutter heads and then there are these other ones on the sides. You can see this top one is disconnected. The pulley was removed from the vertical counter shaft. But this machine I can find no information on other than it was sold by A.R. Williams, which was a distribution company, not a maker, at least in the early days. Um, and there's one other example of this same style of machine at King's Landing Museum in New Brunswick. So I'm hoping to take a tour there and maybe uh, look at it for more reference. The, there's this piece of wood here, it was just used as a guide, but you can kind of see what it does. So you'll start off with a solid stick of this size. Oh, pardon me, mosquito on my finger. And then when you pass it through those two big cutters, thin down this material to make this tenon, and then the small cutter right there on the end will put this groove in place. I believe this is part of a window. So it'll be interesting to set up. Hope you enjoyed the machinery update. Stay tuned. These things will be hooked up to run with their own line shafting system. Not sure. Maybe that Fairbanks um, engine will come in here and run it. Not sure yet. It is a wood barn. Mm. We'll see. So, uh, Lots to do, lots more to come. See you next time.